Hi sixth graders, this is a video on fractions and decimals. So make sure you label your page at the top with fractions and decimals. You don't need to write the learning targets down, but we will be able to write fractions as decimals, write mi mixed numbers as decimal, and write decimals as fractions. Before we can talk about converting fractions and decimals, we just want to make sure that we understand our number system. And if we um, remember talking about place value at the beginning of the year, here's our little chart, we can remember that there after the decimal is the parts that we have, which would be our tenths, hundredths, thousands, and so forth. And that's going to be what our denominator is. That's going to be um, how many it is broken up into. Our whole number then is going to be the number that we use for the mixed number and we'll be able to write our whole with our part as a mixed number or as a decimal. And so our decimal system is based on powers of 10, which helps with our tenths, hundredths, thousandths, and so forth. Writing what we read using place value. So before we go on to fractions and decimals, we also need to make sure that we know how to say the fraction and the decimal correctly and how to write it correctly. So if we have seven tenths, we would write it as a fraction, seven tenths. That means we have, if there's 10 pieces, we have seven of them, so seven tenths. And then as a decimal, I don't have a whole number, I just have a part of a whole. So it'd be 0 0.7 because this is my tenths place, so I would say seven tenths. If I have 32 hundredths, 32 hundredths, so 32 would be my numerator, hundredths would be my fraction, and then as we talk about or we think back to decimal, hundredths, remember, is two places over to the right, so zero and then 0 0.32, I would say 32 hundredths because the two ends in the hundredths place. And then 265 thousandths, so 265 thousandths tells me that's going to be my denominator. It also tells me that's the place that the number is going to end in after the decimal. So then we have 0 0.265 because the 5 is in the thousandths place. If the denominator of a fraction is 10 hundred thousand, just like this, 10 hundred thousand, or any higher power of 10, you can use mental math and place value to convert. So tenths, hundredths, thousandths, we know that that number is gonna go to that particular spot. And then if it's a fraction, we know that the number before it is gonna be the numerator, or we know that this number would be to whatever spot as a decimal. So one way that we will change fractions to decimals is to convert to tenths, hundredths, or thousands if possible. So fraction to decimal, write this down. One method, convert to tenths, hundredths, or thousands if possible. Pause me and write that and then come back. So if I have 7 twentieths, we, we need to ask ourselves, is there a number that my denominator can be multiplied by to get to 100 or 10 or 1,000? But we're not going to go down. So because 20 is greater than 10, I need to go up. So I'm asking myself, can I multiply it times something to get to 100 or 1,000? I know that I can multiply 20 times 5, and that would give me 100. But whatever I do to the denominator, I have to do to the numerator. So seven times five is 35. I have 35 hundredths because 100, or because 100 now is in my denominator, then I know I would write it as 35 hundredths like that as a decimal. If I have five and three fourths, I know that, I'm gonna rewrite this right here. I know that I can multiply four times 25 to get to 100. But because I do that on the bottom, I have to do it to the numerator on the top. So then I get 75, but I can't forget about this 5. So that means I have 5 point, 
and then 75 hundredths is going to be 5.75. Okay, you pause and try a few or continue to do these in your notebook along with me. So 3 tenths is already in, it already has a 10 or 100 or 1,000 in, er, in the denominator. So 3 tenths is just going to be 3 tenths. Because remember, whatever the, new, the denominator ends in, if it's tenths, hundredths, thousandths, then that's what it would be in the decimal. 3 25ths. So in order for me to change it to a decimal according to what's on the bottom, it has to be tenths, hundredths, thousandths. Okay? So 25 can be multiplied by 4, which means I'm going to do the same on the top. So then I would have 12 hundredths. So then I would write it as 0 0.12, which is 12 hundredths. Six and a half. I know that 2 can be multiplied times 5 to get to 10. So I'm going to do the same thing on the top and the bottom, which would be 6 and 5 tenths. So then we would have 6.5. A lot of you know that 1 half is 0.5, so then you maybe didn't even need to convert. You would just know that 6 and a half is 0.5. Also, really quick, I could multiply 2 times 50 to get to 100, and 1 times 50, so then I would have 6 and 50 hundredths, which would be 6.50, but remember, we don't need that 0, so then we would still end up with 6 and 5 tenths. So what about when we cannot convert to 10 hundred or 1,000 evenly because obviously we're going to get some fractions that we can't multiply it by something to get to 10, 100, or 1,000. So then we need to divide the numerator by the denominator. So in your notebook, you could just put if we cannot convert to 10, 100, or 1,000 evenly, then you need to write divide the numerator by the denominator and do the cute little cloud that we like to do in class. All right, so if we have 3 eighths, so these would all be great fractions to be written down with examples. If we have 3 eighths, I am going to put into my calculator, I am going to do the numerator divided by the denominator. So I'm gonna do 3 divided by 8. It's really important that you do it the correct order. So if I do 3 divided by 8 into my calculator, I get 0 0.375, or 375 thousandths. Okay, if I was going to do it the other way, I would get something greater than 1, and that doesn't make sense because 3 eighths is less than 1. So make sure it makes sense. 3 eighths also I know is a little smaller than 1 half. 0 0.375 is also a little bit smaller than 1 half. 1 40th, so in my calculator, I'm going to do 1 divided by 40, and then I would get 0 0.025, or 25 thousandths. And then 7 and 1 eighth, I'm going to take the 7 and just leave it as 7 point whatever, and then I'm going to do 1 divided by 8, and I get 0, oops, not 0, um... I got 0 0.125, but because I have a 7, it's going to be 7.125. So you can't forget about the mixed number. Okay, two more vocab words that I want you to write down. So terminating decimal and repeating decimal. Terminating decimal is a decimal that stops. We'll make it a super easy definition. Repeating decimal goes on and on and it repeats. Oops. Okay, so just kind of like the word in it says. And then bar notation is what we would use to show that it's a repeating decimal. So let's look at seven ninths. Nine cannot be multiplied by anything to get to 10, 100, or 1,000 evenly, so I'm gonna do seven divided by nine and I get 0 0.7777778, but the eight is my calculator just rounding it to that um, spot to show me, but it's really just 0 0.7 repeating. 
So I would write it as 0 0.7, and then this bar tells me that the 7 goes on and on and on and on and on. 3 elevenths. So if I do 3 divided by 11, I get 0 0.27272727. So then the bar would go over both the 2 and the 7, because 2 and 7 are both repeating. 4 and 2 thirds is going to be 4 point and then I do 2 divided by 3, and it's 0 0.66666, so it'd be 4.6 repeating. Let's say you get a decimal that has, so let's look up here, right, and it's 11.3858585. Notice that the bar notation is only over the 85. So that means the decimal now is going to be 11.3858585. That three was just there just at the beginning. So now let's talk about converting decimals to fractions, which is a bit easier. So converting decimals to fractions is going to be the next spot in your notes. Um, and then basically what we do is we look at the decimal and we decide what place it ends in and that's going to be the denominator. So the denominator is what place does it end in and the numerator is whatever number is after the decimal. So here, back over here to 0 0.26, I would say 26 hundredths. So 26 hundredths is going to be my numerator, but then we always simplify. So I know that 26 and 100 can both be divided by two. So then I would have 13 fiftieths and that's my answer in simplest form. 0 0.1, so I would say 1 tenth, so then I would have 1 tenth. That's in simplest form, so then I'm done. 4.07, the 7 is in the hundredths place, so I would say 4 and, because remember that decimal means and, 4 and 7 hundredths. That's in simplest form as well. 2 and 125 thousandths. So I would say 2 and 125 thousandths. Sorry about that. That was my dog barking. So I have 2 and 125 one thousandths, which I know is not in simplest form because remember if it ends in a 5 or a 0, it can for surely be divided by 5. I know that there's a lot more numbers that it can be divided by, but we're just gonna start with that. Oops. So then I would have two and 25 two hundredths, and now I know that they both can be divided by 25. They also could be divided by five. 25 divided by 25 is one, 200 divided by 25. I know 25 goes into 104 times, so that means 25 goes into 208 times. So it'd be 1 8th, but we cannot forget about our 2. So then in simplest form would be 2 and 1 8th. So just a mini recap that you do not need to write down, but I would suggest that you do, or I would at least suggest that you would maybe take a screenshot of this so that you can bring this up and remember it later on. But if we're changing from a fraction to a decimal, remember that we either want to change the denominator to 10, 100, or 1,000 if you can. We also have to change the numerator, or we would divide the numerator by the denominator. And then remember when we're converting from a decimal to a fraction, if it's a mixed number, we leave the whole number alone. The numerator is whatever number, all the numbers after the decimal. The denominator is whatever place the decimal ends in. And then of course we simplify. One more quick, super quick practice in your notebook. So pause me, do all these problems really quick, and then come back and unpause and I will have the answers posted. Check it, if they're wrong, then make corrections quick. And then here's your answers, two and four fifths, I know would be two and eight tenths. Five eighths, I just did five divided by eight and I got 0 0.625. One third, I did one divided by three and I got 0 0.3 repeating. 
9 tenths is would be written as 9 tenths, 6 and 45 hundredths, so notice I wrote it as 6 and 45 hundredths, and then I simplified to 6 and 9 twentieths, and then 7 thousandths, notice that the 7 is in the thousands place, so that's why we have to have thousands in the denominator. That is all I have. Thanks for watching. Make sure you post these notes back in ClassKick on that one slide.